Hey everyone, welcome to String and Story. My name is Holly Ann Knight and it's my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. Thank you so much for joining me today as I'm gonna demonstrate how I quilted this granny square. So you can see I used a simple continuous curve motif and I added a feather flower um, here in the middle. I'm gonna talk you guys through how to um, avoid having asymmetrical sides um, and also some basic things to think about when navigating this. You can see that I've chosen a thread that has a little bit of contrast. Um, I like a little pop in my quilting and I'm excited about the effect that that's gonna create. Um, but you would, of course, want to decide what's best for your quilt when you're choosing thread to match. Always remember that you should unroll a little bit of thread and lay it across your blocks, just like this. All right, without further ado, allow me to find my quilting gloves. I'm gonna slide you guys over here so you're under my needle and we're gonna get started together, okay? Now I've tested my tension already and I'm gonna simply work back and forth, back and forth um, with a zigzag kind of pattern as I quilt this. If you're interested in learning all the ins and outs and tips and tricks and wonderful things about continuous curve quilting, I recommend the book um, Making Connections by my friend Dori Hruska. Um, she's absolutely amazing and she's going to have all the tips and tricks for you beyond this kind of introductory uh, video here. All right, without further ado, off we go then. Now, I like to curve very gently, very slowly so that everything is going to come out nice and even. I always aim for excellence but not for, per not for perfection with my quilting. So I'm okay that these are gonna look kind of organic, right? Especially since I have a very large quilt under a very small throat space. I'm gonna continue around. Now here, you notice I just worked down one side of this block. I'm now just simply gonna go back the other way on the inside. This is the zigzag I was referring to. You see some of these, I actually work them as one continuous curve. And now once again, we begin going back. And I'm just working back and forth, back and forth. Now I'm working these as diamonds, not as squares. And that changes this a little bit. And that's part of why we're gonna have a little bit of stitching in the ditch on the edges. Now here I've hit a seam. I'm gonna stop and smooth that out under my foot so I don't end up with a crease. Back and forth, back and forth, slow and steady. Nice, gentle curves. Now here, on this side of the block, you can see, I did not have to travel along this outside setting triangle. I just simply curved around. Now where I've fallen on this side, it would seem natural to do a curve along the outside of this triangle that's right underneath my needle. But that's what causes the asymmetry I showed you guys on this first block. So I have two options. Um, one is I can retrace where I just came from, but then I'm gonna have to do the same thing on the other curve. The other is to very carefully stitch out to this ditch. And this is apparently what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna stitch along this ditch down to my next starting point. And by the time I quilt this skinny border over here on the side, this will not be very obvious at all, especially once the quilt is washed and all that good stuff. Okay, now here, I'm going to quilt this continuous curved flower. I have a video called Intro to Feathers that shows this in a little bit more detail. But y'all will get to see it here. I'm eyeballing the center. Notice I used a curved line to move into the center. I kind of eyeballed where the center is. And I'm going to use bump back feathers to work my way around and I will end where I started. These require a small amount of retracing, but that becomes very natural with just a little bit of practice. Now here, notice I bump. I'm going to bump down a little further than I maybe normally would and then curve around to continue that feather that I started at the beginning. And you see I've ended where I started. And then I will simply continue working back and forth along the same zigzag pattern. Don't forget to pause and readjust your hands. And 
and here I'm going to stitch in the ditch around this flower so that I can just continue the same quilting path. And back the other way. I'm going to pause and reposition my hands and then I'll do the same thing, stitch in the ditch. That was a less than perfect stitch in the ditch. That's okay. And then back and forth once again for the second half of the block. Those nice gentle curves. Stitch in the ditch. continue on. Oh, and that one I actually went to the interior instead of the exterior, but when we come back we can correct that and it won't be a problem at all. I cannot emphasize enough how much I recommend drawing this on paper before you stitch it out because I'm just kind of going back and forth. Here's where I went one direction. I zigged when I should have zagged, but that's okay. We'll zag on the way back and then just pick up for the next row. These curves become second nature after you draw them and quilt them a few times. on this edge and y'all can see we just worked very carefully from one end of the block to the other creating lovely continuous curves happy quilting everybody